Hello everyone and welcome to our channel. In this video I'll go through the process of creating a studio lighting setup in 3ds Max with V-Ray. Studio lighting is a technique that uses artificial lights to create a realistic and appealing illumination for your 3D models. It is commonly used for product visualization and animations. Before we start, make sure you have 3ds Max and V-Ray installed on your computer. You will also need a 3D model to work with. You can use any model you like or you can download the one that I am using from the link in the description. Or you can as well download the scene with the lighting setup from our Patreon page. Ok, let's begin first by creating a backdrop for our 3D model. This will be the surface that it will stand on and the background that we'll see behind it. To create a backdrop, we'll use a chamfer cylinder. To create one, go here and instead of the standard, press on the extended primitives. And here is the chamfer cylinder. Then go to the top view and by pressing here and dragging, we'll create a chamfer cylinder. Now create the chamfer and let's go to perspective view. Let's adjust the dimensions, make it high, a bit bigger the radius, let's see how it looks and let's make also the chamfer a bit bigger and let's some, add some subdivisions to the sides and to the fillet. Now press here and convert it to editable poly, go to top view select the polygon and delete the half of the cylinder. Then in front view delete also the top part of the cylinder. In top view select the edge mode and select the edges then by drag shift dragging we'll extrude a bit those edges like this to create the uh, backdrop like this. Now that we have created it for our scene, let's assign the material to it. Uh, to open the material editor, click on this icon here or press the M key. But first make sure that uh, we have selected the V-Ray render engine as our render engine so that we can select also the V-Ray material. Ok, press here and go to V-Ray and select V-Ray material. This will be the material for our backdrop. To assign it to it, just simply drag and drop on the chamfer cylinder and it's applied just like this. Ok, now that we have created it, let's add our camera to our scene. Let's create it in a top view. Go to the camera rollout and select V-Ray. From here select the V-Ray physical camera and just simply drag to create the camera and its target. Uh, so we will create the film gate to be 10 millimeter, a closer one, and to get inside the camera just simply press the C key. And now we are inside of it and we can see what is viewed from its point of view. Uh, to enable the save frame pre press shift and F uh, this way we, it will show you the final output of your camera in terms of aspect ratio and resolution now let's assign the resolution of our uh, final render I'll make it like uh, 2000 by 2000 pixel in width and height, a square aspect ratio of 1 and now let's 
move the camera and a bit closer to our model and also I'll move it a bit up let's also adjust our model in a bit like this to be in a more dynamic view so that we can see more of it ok now that we have created our backdrop and our camera it's time to add some lights uh, we will use four type of whites main white, fuel white, rim white and a back white ok the main white white will define the shape and the shadows of our model for all of the whites we'll be using uh, V-Ray white so go to the white tab and select the V-Ray from the drop down menu and select and create a V-Ray plain white so uh, let's create our main white I'll make it a bit smaller so that our shadows are a bit sharper so make something around 1 meter by 1 meter rectangular and let's adjust it it should be like something like this a bit perpendicular to our camera and let's enable the interactive render to see our white okay obviously we need to adjust the multiplier a bit let's make it like 1600 okay this looks nice let's adjust also the color temperature I prefer to make it something warmer from this side Oh, this is too warm let's try something like 5000 yeah like this one ok from the options let's enable the white to be invisible and let all other uh, ticks like this ok now to create the few white this is the secondary white that will fill the dark areas and add some variation in our whiting it is usually placed opposite to the main white so create a copy and call this one fill white let's turn it to be opposite and let's rename this one to be main white and let's disable it to see and adjust the fill white okay this one should be a uh, lot less uh, strong we don't have to we don't want uh, to have double shadows so it should be only from one side and also the temperature to make it uh, like cool white something like 9500 uh, also to, to be more soft I'll make the white bigger in this way it will add more white to the, our scene and make the shadows softer but we don't need our any shadow so I'll move the white a bit to the back like this okay there is some ni nice whiting in the shadows let's test both of the whites together as you can see there is no double shadows it's only in one direction from the main white and this is just uh, complementary whiting on the dark parts like this you can check the difference without and with our fill white okay now let's create the rim whites this will add and create a high white around our model and separate it from the background it is usually 
are placed at the back of the model. Let's create a copy and call it rim white. And let's turn it exactly at the back of our model, like this. It should be pointing towards our camera. It should be like neutral temperature, 6500, white white. And the multiplier should not be very strong. Let's test it. can see the halo that is adding on the top of the model and here on some parts. This is exactly what we are looking for. Let's adjust it a bit more. Like this. Okay, now let's create the back whiting that will illuminate the back of our background so it's not so dark. Let's copy this white here and call it back white. It should be as well neutral white like this and it should be pointing towards the end of the background. and let's make it bigger and also stronger Okay, now that we have created our whites, what's left is to adjust the size, position, rotation and intensity as needed until that we achieve our desired look according to our model. And the last step is to render our scene using V-Ray as our final renderer. You can adjust your setting and add the elements that you will use in your post process. And then, then what's left is to press the Shift and Q key to start rendering. And that's it. You have successfully created a studio lighting setup in 3ds Max and V-Ray. You can use this technique in any 3D model you want to showcase it in a realistic and appealing way. I hope that you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please like, share and subscribe to our channel for more tutorials. You can also follow us on Instagram and LinkedIn. Thank you for watching and happy rendering! If you did enjoy anything in this video, then drop a like and a big thank you to everyone who does. If you haven't subscribed yet, click below and join us. We have some great videos coming up next that you don't wanna miss. Thanks for watching and see you in the next